So uh, the recording has started now. Um, so I do have on the tentative agenda, uh, Kiriti's draft as well as Song's draft. Uh, they requested that, uh, you know, they both talk about things uh, or an indicator uh, to be used for an extended header. Uh, and the other one is uh, in embedding actions in the label stack. Um, I'm hoping uh, Song is there today. Uh, wasn't, yeah, he is. Uh, but this is the agenda that I had. Um, do you want to add things? Uh, anyone want, wants to add uh, an, an item to, for the, to the, today's agenda? Mm. So, Tarek, I was just wondering that uh, along the line of discussions for use case, can we keep something like programmability using MPL as, as a theme? For, or can we have like five minute discussion if that is the good way to approach why we are doing it, how we are doing it? Sure. Um... Network uh, programmability, is that what you meant? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I, I'll take it that the, 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 the agenda is satisfactory to most of us. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, I did mention that uh, there we there was some cleanup done to the main page. Um, uh, we have um, the agenda and notes for every meeting. Sorry, I clicked very quick. For the previous meetings, we have uh, a link to the agenda and uh, notes uh, minutes that we took. So by clicking on that, you will see the agenda of the previous as well as the minutes. And we have the recording uh, in case you want to go back and uh, play, replay it. So this week's uh, recording is not there. I will add it once we are done the meeting. Uh, if you have any feedback or enhancements you suggest, uh, feel free to shoot, shoot them at us. Um, so that was about administrative. Uh, uh, for the note taking, um, if, uh, if anyone uh, has his uh, hands free and can take some notes, I appreciate it. And uh, after the end of the meeting, please uh, send them uh, towards us, uh, the MPLS chairs, and I will make sure they are compiled and added to the minutes. I'll, I'll try to add minutes as we go. Uh, the wiki I did mention, if you have suggestions, please, uh, uh, please uh, send it to us. Um, any any feedback on item number one, Doha and uh, um, attendees? Okay. Uh, the second item we have on the agenda is uh, the uh, draft compiler and PLS. Uh, um, a special purpose label for uh, forwarding actions. And I'll give the floor to you, Kiriti. Um, I'm trying to share content. Okay, then I'll stop. Great, thank you. So can you see my screen? I do, but it's a bit small though. Uh, yeah, okay. Not sure about Is that better? Uh, yeah, clearly. Yeah. So, Kireti, one thing about this, yes. what, what, I, what I call walkthrough, is that you should uh, be very, uh, you should be sure that you pick, your, pick up all the questions on the way and don't. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, so I, you, I it. It's not a presentation, it's a walkthrough. You go through things and then you check that there are no outstanding questions. I get it. Okay, so um, so uh, there are a couple of things about this draft. One is that it understands that there are many uh, features that people are trying to 
uh, have special purpose labels for and that we have a very small number of special purpose labels. So it's trying to put multiple things into one special purpose label. Uh, and so the, uh, the key insight here is that um, if you look at the label stack, you have um, a whole bunch of uh, different things in it. The main thing that people look at, especially for labels that are not at the top of the label stack, is you look at the value, the, what we call the label, um, and that identifies what that label is supposed to be doing. Then you have these bits called the TC and TTL, which are not used, and then you have the uh, end of stack bit that is used to tell when the label stack ends. So the, the goal here is to say, let's take that label and say, I'm gonna do something special here, and then let's use the TC and TTL bits to say what that special thing is. So, um, <clears throat> so the proposal is to use a single base special purpose label to compactly encode multiple forwarding actions, and these would be uh, typically encoded directly in the label stack, although you could have a pointer to things that you want to do afterwards. So, um, so you use the, the special uh, purpose label, this new one, to, or you could reuse an existing one, that's also possible, to essentially say, if you look at the second label here, um, you've encoded a bunch of things here. So uh, in the TC, you've encoded uh, a bit that uh, will say whether there's a further header uh, and so on. Uh, and, and then in the TTL, you've also reused a bit. So the idea is that a single base special purpose label would encode multiple actions, and then th those actions would be encoded by and large following the special purpose label uh, in the label stack, but a few of them can come after the label stack. So, um, so as you can see, there's that multi-purpose special purpose label, and then you have uh, the associated data and the action bits that you can see uh, underlined are the ones that tell you what's in that uh, associated data. The, the key thing is that associated data is allowed to use 31 bits from every 32-bit word because the end of stack bit is sacrosanct. Um, so. Uh, the end of, uh, yeah. Um, so here's uh, the initial propos proposal for what these bits uh, do. So you have here the forwarding actions indicator, um, and so you have uh, a, a new special purpose level that says, I've got a bunch of things. Uh, please look at my TC bits and my TTL bits in order to figure out what's going on. And then please look at the forwarding, uh, the, the following uh, labels. To, uh, to get the data that goes with this. So just to give you a quick example, the end bit that comes right uh, to the right of the stack, end of stack indicator, is a no further pass out bit. So where before I had asked for a whole special purpose level just for no further pass out, here uh, it's uh, contained by just one bit. And there is no associated action because that bit has all the information. Yes, uh, everything is uh, is good. Or no, uh, I don't want you to do for any further fast feed out. But other bits like the EG bit combination says the next uh, forwarding action might be either the entropy uh, label itself, or a GIS label, which is essentially a network slice label, or a combination of those uh, in either a single word or in two words. So it's a two-bit combination that tells you what's happening. So the okay. idea is that you have a... Kariti, yeah? does this qualify the previous label or the next label? Presumably it qualifies the previous qual label. Uh, it, well, I, yeah, it qualifies the label that's further away from the top of stack. I, I don't know which way... Uh, you, so, 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 is it qualify? Is the are these parameters applicable to the label that's closer to bottom of stack or closer to top of stack? Closer to the bottom. Right, but that so so I don't understand how this works then because um, 
that you 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 should be forwarding on the top of stack label, and there has to be a label in front of this, doesn't there? Yeah, that's the previous forwarding label that you see on this. Uh, this right. Picture. Uh, I, maybe previous is probably, uh, I, 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 yeah, that's the forwarding label. The, the label that's on top of stack is the forwarding label. I think of this as the ELI. So if I was parsing a packet and I got uh, a, a, a label stack and the top label said, you know, go that away, right? But I was, was willing to parse the rest of it, I would be going further down and say, oh, there's an ELI, okay. Um, oh, great, that gives me a better handle on how to do ECMP. Uh, and so the next label after that would be the actual EL label, uh, the entropy label. So I'm, I'm sort of parsing from top to bottom. The top label says, you know, this is, this is where I want you to go. The next label says, by the way, I have an uh, entropy label. And the third label says, I am the entropy label. So in this case, the top label says, this is where to go. The next label says, oh, I have an entropy label and a, a network uh, slice identifier. And the, the, the label after that, uh, in, you know, going towards the bottom of stack, says, here's what it is. Um, and if it is a combination, um, because one of the combinations of EG tells you that in 31 bits, I'm encoding both entropy and uh, uh, slice ID. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I, for some reason, something you said earlier made me think it worked the other way around. But you're, you're so, so you, 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 you're going to take the action based on the top of uh, stack, and you qualify that action based on this pair, um, which, um, well, could that be anywhere in the stack, or does it have to be the next pair of labels? Because you might have be a pair of different. Stack. Well, you might have a pair of different ones of these. You could, so, so the, there are a couple of things about this, so you're getting into chapter two, but, but. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go away for a bit. No, no, no. Um, I think we, we could uh, at least open that question right now. You could have multiple of these, and the reason for having multiple of these is that uh, the whole problem of readable stack depth. And so if you do uh, want to put, um, you know, sort of a, a forwarding actions indicator higher up in the stack so people can see it, then you'd have the, you know, more of an ability to do something with it. But then if you then got to the point where it actually comes to the top of the stack, you have to pop it and all the associated actions so that you can get back to a label that you can forward on. And then either you lost everything or you have another copy, you know, maybe 10, 10 labels deep. So, so you could argue that you could argue then that this applies to all of the labels above it because when you've popped it then you may find another one a bit, a bit further down you can, i can think of scenarios where i might want to apply it along part of a path segment right right yes so so you you could and and that would be a natural way of doing it so i have uh, a label stack which are pure forwarding labels and uh, as your uh, taking those actions, if you go further into the stack, the first forwarding action indicator that you get is the one that lies. And as long as I have those labels up there and I have not reached that forwarding actions indicator, as you said, it applies to all of those. So I could pop, swap, do whatever. But then when I get to a point where I actually expose the forwarding actions indicator, I pop it and all its data and say, okay, now I'm in, in a new re regime. And for this yeah. one, if there is another one further down, that, that's the one that applies. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think we're in sync. So, Indy, what are the um, the the depth um, that people feel comfortable with? I think those hopefully are part of the questions that Loa wanted to have answered in his uh, in his document, right? So it seems that um, the, 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 there are a few parameters coming into play here, right? So the first one is how far have existing you know, special labels been seeked for within the stack, right? Do we feel comfortable that, you know, this type of stuff can be, you know, seeked for anywhere in the stack? Let's say I have a, you know, a long um, segment routing strict uh, path indicator, let's say 10 labels on top, and then this one that carries, for example, all the relevant, you know, 
per hop actions to be done in conjunction with each, each of these uh, 10 steering hops. So, no, I, I, I can't remember it's covered by the existing segment routing stuff, but I think we agreed last week that we needed to know what the uh, accessible depth in the stack was and that we needed to advertise it. And the so are we, and, uh, is that a different uh, parameter for seeking the... into something than the, the maximum, uh, you know, depth of a stack uh, until the, the bottom of stack? Are those two potentially two different numbers? They could be. Yes, and, and there was this uh, suggestion that you, um, well, the first number was going to be distributed in the IGP. So when the ingress pushes on the label stack, uh, it is aware of um, which router this is going to go through and based on that, where I need to put um, different yeah. things like uh, ELI or something. Well, that's the obvious way to do it, right? It's think, easy for routing to know to know this information. Yeah, but I think the other problem is that, uh, I mean, that was a simplistic approach where it's a binary thing. I can see three, three levels deep and that's all. I think where we're getting to with our forwarding engines is I can see I can see three levels deep and not impact my full performance. If I go beyond that, I can still do it, but I, that will have a corresponding impact on my performance. So it's not like I cannot see ten levels deep. It's just if I go that far, maybe my forwarding um, rate drops and, by fifteen percent. And indeed, we can advertise those in capability, can't we? Yes, I don't think we do today, but yes, we can. Well, we can. We can. We, still, well, yeah, you know, a lot of this isn't done today, but uh, if it's trivial to add in routing, we should just sort of take it as read that we can add it because uh, it, it only, it's only a few bits yeah. and it won't affect the performance of the routing engine. Yeah, but see, the problem with, you know, seeking in the stack for a special label is that you never know if if you're doing this at a loss of performance. And you're doing it all the time because you don't know if there is one such special label or not, right? There is a lot of performance waste. Now, it's it's Vimir, if I may. I, I think Riti, at the time when we did ELI and, and entropy label, it was defined in the context of the LSP, right? Or the, the part that uh, in question. So in other words, this special label needs to be relevant in a certain context uh, that is being processed. Eh? So I'm not saying I, it can be in multiple places in the path because we can have stacked LSPs, right? So that's possible. But I think we also have to define the actions that we define because if you look to a uh, context like entropy label and slicing indicator, I I would say, yeah, for, they are uh, deriving forwarding action, meaning, uh, the level of ECMP you can do, or let's say QS context and stuff like that. But if you start saying we can also do redirection of a packet to a different next hop and stuff like that, we are, uh, as we have to be, uh, what I'm trying to say is that we have to contain and define what the forwarding actions uh, are about, because otherwise we we can have different information uh, over, I overload it in different places and, and we get into context and uh, conflicts and yeah. security issues potential. So there's a big difference, Wim, between entropy label and this stuff, right? In okay. entropy label, we only ever said it was an optional extra. And uh, if the parser can't get there, well, too bad, it'll do whatever else it's going to do. Yeah. Whereas we're talking about things here that are essentially mandatory to understand in order to correctly forward the packet. Indeed, yeah. That's what I was I was I was right. alluding to. So I think first, but I entropy label also we indicate whether the egress can support it or not. So probably we need something similar uh, here. Of course, the things in the middle, uh, whether they can uh, handle it or not. Okay, that's uh, we have to deal. I see how we deal with that uh, on top of it. But I think also I think the amount of action that are possible is important to to review right because uh, if we open up uh, it to a lot of things i think we end up with potential security issues and and overloading uh, or what the router has to do based on what on on, on which bits because sometimes uh, with mpls the actions are uh, go to this next up or this or do ecmp or something like that versus here i think it's a different set of actions that we are talking about 
I'm not sure I, 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 I agree with you on the security thing, uh, Wim. Huh? I mean, MPLS has got a, uh, the data plane has got so many security holes that anything new won't make much difference. Uh, and on the other hand, we always manage our MPLS networks on the basis that they're very fragile. So well, the security that... director wasn't hearing that. But let me put it differently, Wim. Um, if I didn't do this, I could actually do the same thing by saying, I'm going to have a different um, uh, special purpose label for each of these. So, like I said, you know, there, there's a request out there already saying, I want a special purpose label for no further pass feed out. So I would put that label in, and then next to that, I would put in another label that says, oh, and by the way, I have an ELI, uh, and followed by EL. And then I'd say, I have a, oh, and a network slice identifier uh, indicator followed by a network slice identifier. And so I would have uh, you know, a stack of you know, maybe 10 labels. Uh, what this says essentially is I'm going to compress those 10 labels into a single forwarding action indicator followed by just the data from those 10 labels. So maybe it's only five or six labels now. So that, so, so, so that I think is key. No, no, I could, I could, don't get me wrong. I'm not against this proposal, by the way, but I want to, what I'm trying to say is we need to contain it uh, to a certain set of things, but also and make it, uh, I, the context at which it applies needs to be clear, is what I'm trying to say. I think if we say we can be anywhere in the. Yeah. Kriti, uh, I have a question there. Sure. Uh, I think it's related to uh, our viewers' uh, initial question. Now, let's say I'm a transit router, I'm doing the label swapping, okay? Now, as part of doing that, am I supposed to always check if there is a forwarding action indicator following this, this the label that I'm swapping? The only, way you can, the only way you can make that compulsory is that you have a FEC that says do it. Otherwise, it has to be optional, doesn't it? Or you have to be yeah. really, really careful that, and, and maybe that's another strategy, that this packet never goes off of an LSP path that will automatically do this. Yeah, so for example, and, and to answer many of your questions, just go back to the ELI. Um, if, I, if I am a transit router and uh, you know, I'm given a label stack, there's nothing that says you must look at the ELI you must search uh, the stack of the ELI. And in fact, in some cases, uh, if the ELI was not placed appropriately, you may not, your hardware may not be able to see it yet. But it is highly okay. recommended that if you could, you would scan the label stack for that. And if you uh, found it, then you would do a better job of uh, load balancing. Actually, Kariti, there are some applications where they break unless you uh, find that ELI and action it. And we recommend that you only set up that sort of LSP where you're sure that all the routers on the path will find the ELI. I've I know I've I can't remember which the draft was, but I have written that text. But but don't I? I, I can do read that. that. But but in the end. The, the ELI draft did not say thou shalt do this. Um, it said, you know, oh, if you can, you do a better job of course. You're absolutely right about the ELI draft, because uh, I remember all the arguments about that. But there are other drafts, I believe, that say if ECMP is a problem, you must use the ELI and you must make sure that all the routers on the path can respect this. I'm yeah. sure I did. Okay. Some, I wrote those words in, a, in, a, in an RSC somewhere. I don't think that that's a problem, right? The control plane can always make sure that, you know, the, the generator of the stack can figure out if it's supported, um, if, if it's really necessary to have that information. But the, the performance impact of seeking if there may not be such, uh, you know, uh, an, an SPL in the stack, that, that seems to be something that maybe hasn't oh, been given yes, so much a... attention. And I think that what you said that basically whether or not to seek for an SPL is something that <coughs> could either be, you know, for free because it doesn't hurt performance or it could be, you know, really um, you're wasting performance or it could be tied to the FEC of uh, the stacks further up, uh, the labels further up in the stack, right? So I think these options would be good to you're, you're right, Charles. We, we have to know 
ahead whether it's worth our while looking down, don't we? Otherwise, um, you're right, you waste a lot of performance needlessly. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, most likely it is when you're wasting performance, maybe, um, you know, it's not an overhead if you're already having to do all the crazy stuff that the SPL may be indicating, right? So, but uh, if you're seeking and there is no SPL to do, that's when the waste happens. So, um, and, mm -hmm. and it's unclear to me, you know, whether that is today a real issue in, in the MPLS so, so, or not. So, so you could imagine a don't look any further SPL and you could imagine a new swap operator that a new, a new pop operator rather that um, uh, pushes that don't go any further um, onto the stack before it exposes the next one so if 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 the FEC of the labels uh, pushed on on top of this uh, would say please you know uh, you, you, you must look for SPL that would be an explicit positive, right? And that allows you not to look any further. Right. So the question right. is, and you can also have an explicit negative, yeah. which is do not an SPL that says don't look for other SPLs. I, I got that, but I didn't get a good example why I wanted that. So, so Torles, uh, today, in my understanding, is most routers will parse the stack and even beyond the stack to do load balancing. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, that, think uh, we're getting a... I understand that, but let me say where I'm coming from, right? So, I mean, I obviously would love to see for something like DeadNet uh, to be able to work with MPLS in the way that we're liking to do it these days, which is called SR, which DeadNet hasn't really started to look into. And if we're doing SR um, and I want to have two, you know, uh, live life path, that means I need to do strict um, uh, steering path. That means a lot of um, uh, MPLS labels to steer. And that's when, you know, the problem of how deep can I look uh, with or without performance impact comes in. So that's why I'm kind of uh, uh, nailing on that part. Somewhere in the bottom of that pile was Kariti trying to say something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, I think there's two different things that we are discussing here. Uh, and we're sort of deep diving into what's the performance impact and how can we uh, try to re reduce that. I think the first step is to understand the proposal and this idea that you, you're doing multiple actions into a single BSPL and, and what the implications of the, that are and, and also the idea that you're carrying forwarding action in the label stack, uh, sort of like we already did with the ELI and some 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 people have suggested to do also with a slicing indicator. But that's the first thing that I think we need to tackle. And if that works, if this, this idea is a good idea, then you go on to the next thing and say, where do you put it? How do you put it? Do you have new facts that say, um, you know, all the previous forwarding action that you want me to do, plus please look further in the stack for a forwarding action indicator, etc." cetera. Um, so I think, you know, if we can solve or at least come to a, a good place with what this idea is about and what, to, you know, because these bits that you see, H, E, G, and F, Q, it's almost like uh, you're at the, um, at the optician trying to check your eyes. <laughs> <Random set> of <laughs> those those are it? a shot, a, a, a suggestion of what forwarding actions could be compressed into a single uh, label, a single uh, action indicator. I think, you know, there's that, um, but once we get past this and this idea that we can reuse the TC and TTL bits and that we can have forwarding actions that are 31 bits long, then we say, okay, here's what this all looks like. Here's what the value is. Now, how do we actually put it in a, in a real live label stack? How deep do you put it? How do you tell people it's there? If they don't know it's there and they're doing a fishing expedition, how much performance are they wasting? So, I, I, I mean, those are important questions, but I think we need to first, uh, you know, settle this question. But, Kiriti, can I disagree on the order of importance? Because to me, you know, what you're trying to do with merging these things, that's a fine option, but it is ultimately um, not different from trying to f find similar encoding past the bottom of stack, right? Whether or not to do this uh, before uh, the, the bottom of stack or the same encoding starting with the H bit, let's say, so to speak, 
right, um, after the bottom of stack, whether one is better than the other primarily comes from understanding, you know, how well could we even do this on uh, before the bottom of stack? And that's exactly the question about seeking the stuff across uh, uh, label stacks as an additional um, action uh, for seeking to the bottom of stack, which I think we always want to do. Um, I don't know that we always want to do, but I think uh, I think I'm not I'm not giving value judgments on which is better or which must be done first. I'm just saying there are two different things. One is to understand what we can achieve by repurposing the TC and TTL bits, uh, what the mechanics of that will be, and then what what uh, information we can encode. And the the second is where do we put it in the stack, and do we actually have multiple copies? Is there a value to that? So, for example, this idea that no, you might have no. a forwarding uh, effect that says go look inside because there is a, um, you know, the, the, there is a forwarding actions indicator that you should be looking at or you might find very helpful. That's one way, but then you're blowing up the number of um, forwarding uh, labels because there's the one that says just go straight and the one that says go straight but go look for a forwarding actions indicator. The, a different way of doing it is that you, you have a, uh, you know, the forwarding action uh, label, the regular forwarding label, and below that you have a forwarding actions indicator, which has this is all the information that is there lower in the stack, but I'm actually not going to carry any of that forwarding action data with me. So if you repurpose one of these bits saying, I'm just just an indicator, I don't have any data. Um, so there is an entropy label here, there is a uh, uh, slice identifier here, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Then if you're interested in the entropy label, go further. And, and that way you're not wasting your time. And so you can get sort of a fine grained look at what they would be if you went further into the label stack. And then you could say, this is the second label in the stack. And if you pop the top label, then you just pop this label and there'll be you know, maybe another one. So I think there are many ways of tackling the, the problem of, um, should I be spending cycles looking through the stack? The one that I prefer is that you don't actually encode it into the forwarding label itself, into the fact, but you encode it into a forwarding actions indicator that says, I'm a dummy forwarding actions indicator that just tells you what forwarding actions data exists in the stack, should you go look for it. But um, I'm gonna be really near the top of it. Because if you imagine that the forwarding actions indicator, that's one label, and then you have four more labels of information that go with it, that's five labels, and you may not want to repeat those five labels that readable stack. So, 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 label stack. so, so, Kariti, I mean, the alternative, is that you always stick this stuff at the top of stack, i.e. one label be you know, below the top label, and you right. make the pop operator more complex, so you keep moving it down the stack. Uh, that was one thing that we considered for the ELI, um, because when we were first doing the ELI, and then we said, hey, but if we want the ELI with readable stack up with uh, you know, deep SR stacks, um, we could a, have the ELI really the top of stack, which was very, very funky. And then we said we can have the ELI the second label. And if you happen to pop the top one, then you go store the ELI away somewhere, look at the next one, and then push the ELI below that. And yep. people didn't really like that. And so we yeah, ended up like saying we Yeah, but that was, before, that was before we had these mega stacks from SR, though. Yeah, well, can no, I no, comment? that was when we had the mega stacks. Oh, uh, one one comment the about this, uh, Kiriti and uh, Stuart. Um, I find it useful to have, uh, you know, the FAI in the stack, especially if you have a path made of uh, multiple sections. And I think uh, maybe Stuart, you hinted to it uh, earlier. Uh, I'll give you credit on that. Is you can embed actions specific to a section of a path. Uh, if you have it repeated multiple times, if you put it on the top of the stack, then you don't have that luxury anymore. And if you put it after the bottom of stack, it'll be, I don't know how you'll do it, but it'll be more complex. But the idea of having sections and then, you know, putting an FAI. Well, and well, I, I, hang on a second. I can invent a little mechanism of, that gets it popped if you want. 
Yeah, I mean, if you put, you put it on the top, action. then uh, it's applicable to all uh, all through, right? Until you pop it. Right, right, right. So, but you could have a TTL in it if you wanted to um, only you only use it three times, for example. Yeah, no, but yeah, I want to use specific TTL. actions on sec section one, another set of actions on section two. Right, right, uh, right, right, right. So, so we need both of those actually. We well, we need both of those characteristics. So, we need the characteristic that you can apply it to multiple sections, and the characteristic that you can have multiple in the stack. There are different scenarios that it works for. Right, I agreed. But but if you put it, if you put everything on the top always, then yeah, I'm not sure how you'll do the multiple sections thing, or even. Uh, oh, maybe I should you, write it down. I mean, I can I can I can I can visualize that. You probably have not a TTL but a one bit TTL saying this is now no longer valid, uh, and then this time you pop it and then actually throw it away. But having so that's when you come to the end of the section. But I, I think again we're we're trying to um, you know we're, we're we're going off to the side a bit. One of the solutions in in repeating the following actions indicates multiple times. There are two there are two reasons for repeating it. One is because readable stack 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 depth is too low. Um, so let's say the readable stack depth is five, and you have a label stack of fifty of uh, twenty. Uh, then you'd have to repeat this a few times. And the second is uh, the reason that um, Stuart uh, mentioned that you could have multiple seg sections or segments. And so you want to say, this is what applies in segment one, and then in segment two, you have a different one. So those are two different one, two different reasons for having multiple uh, repeated uh, forwarding action indicators. But the one idea I want to just uh, keep in, in your mind for the first case where you're repeating things, if the forwarding action indicator contains a lot of extra data, uh, forwarding action data, you could have a forwarding action indicator that's a dummy forwarding action indicator saying there is a big prize if you, if you want to look further down the stack. And I can tell you exactly what that is. There's an entropy label, there's a, uh, there's a uh, what's it called, a slice indicator and there's OM data or some, something like that. It doesn't have to be everything. So you could set some of these bits and not some others. But you have one bit that, I mean, I've used up all the bits here, but if we re-encode this in some way, you could have one bit that says, but that's not following me directly. Go look for the next one, which could be a few few uh, labels below me. And that, that's sort of like, if I care for using the entropy indicator, um, I have to do some more work. If I don't care for it, I can I can stop passing right here. And so I think there are a few ways to to skin this cat. But the the top idea is that um, if you assign the values um, for the TC and TTL bits, um, we can actually make a single PSPL do a lot of work. So I agree with that. I like it, but and we do need to work through the various um, the various options. N now we've got this starting point. I mean, I think you kind yeah. of um, took your, took the lid off Pandora, and we've got to go and find the sort of the nice Pandoras in there. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Kire Kireti, can I kind of just summarize my understanding at the moment? So what you call the previous forwarding label. It's a label that actually arrived with the packet. Uh, yes. And if you, from that label, there must be a way of understanding whether you should go look for a forwarding action indicator or not. Uh, not necessarily. I think uh, not necessarily. Then you have to do it, and then you have to do it every time. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, so it's a question of whether we do it implicitly or explicitly. Okay. And then, uh, okay, we, we could do it either way, but uh, I'm a kind of a scared about doing it uh, for, for every label, unless we have a... We do for ELI. I mean, that's how ELI works. Those uh, and, we, uh, uh, you might... uh, and we do for the five tuple. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. And by the way, we can, we, we can pretty much imagine that... Uh, all the existing FECs we have may already have an explicit indication that says, look for SPL, right? So the fact uh, what I think Stuart was saying that we may have a negative one, 
that could be new, uh, you know, uh, normal forwarding levels that have the explicit one. Don't look for them, right? So we just think it's implicit, but we can, you know, go back and say, well, what we thought was implicit is something we explicitly included in the current, uh, you know, FECs that we've defined. The thing about using the uh, explicit one, I mean, there may be other ways of doing it by stealing a bit from the TTL or something, but otherwise, um, if I said, here's the label to reach me, um, I would say, here's the second label to reach me, but it's with, um, but you must look at the stack uh, and, and look for forwarding actions. So I'm blowing up my forwarding label by a factor of two. No, but labels by factor two. I think there are two different types of explicit versus implicit, right? The one we've been talking about was explicit or implicit in the FEC, not in the stack itself. You mentioned the second one, which is yeah, maybe uh, use a specific no, no, no. traffic I, no, class. I was talking about the first one. No, I was talking about the first one. So if I have a label that says go to uh, router XYZ. I can have a second label that says go to router XYZ and as you go along every time look inside the stack. So by exploding the the forwarding um, you know the, the the scale of forwarding labels by a factor of two, I can I can then say, so now if I'm the ingress and I'm going to put a forwarding action indicator, I will I will look for the egress label that says look inside the label stack. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have any of those, I'll use the other one. Thanks. But so what we probably need to, sorry, what we probably need to do is to write a bunch of this down because I'm sure there's a lot that that the, the, um, there's a lot of people not on this call that need to know about it. There's a lot of people on here who need to think about it a bit more, in, in, including myself. And uh, we probably should write down the options so we can get our head around what which of what could be quite far-reaching decisions we should take. I can I can get a start on that. Do do you mean an idea or a, do we have a wiki for this that um, people can put? I think that would be a lot more effective. But um, either way, um, I can get a start on this. Yeah, um, but uh, you, you, we should just collect these together so that we can get our heads around what the collection is and then pick the stars out of it. Okay. There is a wiki. I'm taking notes. I'll, uh, I can make a separate page for. Specific this uh, the discussion and then you you, you can free feel free to okay. add. Uh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Kiki, so the, the... Uh, do you have a lot more? I wanted to make sure we have time for uh, song. Uh, we promised. Yeah, sure, sure. So yeah. I, I was just closing. Yeah. I, I, the, was not really, I was not really done. Uh, I was just going okay. to ask if. You have the incoming forwarding label. Is the next label, uh, the forwarding action indicator, is that always in that place? Oh, no, it's typically going to be further down the stack, but um, because you don't want to repeat this, because if you're going to pop that label, then, you know, what, what happens and so on. So typically there'll be three or four forwarding labels. And, and then there will be the forwarding action indicator. Again, this is just like the ELI, right? And so if someone was looking at the top of, le top of stack and said, oh, this means go left, but wait, I'm going to go further into the stack and see if there's a forwarding action indicator. They find it and then they take appropriate action. And then that top of label, they might swap it, they might pop it, they might do what they want with it. And, and so, you know, you might go a few hops before the forwarding action gets exposed in which case it gets uh, thrown away. Well, and all of its friends afterwards. Yeah. So, so, so you've got to throw away. Uh, what, 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 what? I don't know how long the um, FAI data is, but uh, but the, the, but you've got to throw away the complete set, haven't you? Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So you you need to parse these bits, and that tells you how long the data is, and then based on that you need to throw away the, the data. Yeah. And then yeah, and then you're exposing a new forwarding actually forwarding label. Did you have Correct. more slides that you didn't get through because we sorry derailed into how to find your FAI stuff? Um, I wasn't actually planning to go through the whole slide deck. I was um, okay. the the idea was to get to this key point. 
and uh, and then uh, I think it was a good place. I mean, I can look at more slides to see if there's anything else. So this is just explaining what this is. I think this was this is a pretty important thing um, because right up front, people ask um, if if this, if I was working with things that are in the stack or beyond the stack. So most of what I'm working with is in the stack, but there are a couple of things that could give you indications of what happens after the stack. So, um, but yeah, uh, then beyond that, there are just examples of how you do this and how you could have multiple ones of them. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll stop here. Although, I mean, um, for those who um, are intrigued, you can look at the rest of the slides. It does explain a little bit more. And so, did you upload these slides someplace? Yeah, when when we had the um, that special, oh, this is the, the same the slide that 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 the, uh, the, yeah. uh, These are the same ones yeah, that were yeah. last in ATF, aren't they? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure if it was the same. Thank you. Yeah, they're the same. They're the same. But having said that, um, I think it's interesting to um, yeah, and then some analysis. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, some of this um, other discussion that we're having, we can start writing up. And if uh, Tariq uh, gives us a wiki page, we can uh, do it there. Yeah. And I can get it started. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm pretty much done. Loa, you were, um, you said you weren't done? Uh, I think I am now. Okay, okay, great. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Kiriti. Um, yeah, uh, the, I'll, put the, I'll put the pointer to the uh, to the slides uh, for that you presented in ITF 110 as well in the minutes uh, so that people have access to those easy access. Um, Song, I think you are uh, one of the atten attendees. Uh, can you acknowledge that? You are yes. Okay, great. Can uh, can you go ahead and uh, uh, share what you want uh, you want to uh, to share with us today? Okay, you see my screen. Yes. Okay, let me put it in the presentation mode. Okay, thanks, Cheers. Um, yeah, next I'm going to uh, uh talk about this uh, draft. Uh, in this draft, we basically list uh, several possible options uh, to support MPS extension headers after the label stack. So first, uh, uh, we all agree that uh, we need something uh, in the MPS label stack to indicate uh, the presence of uh, uh, whatever follows it. So in this case, uh, we mean there are several uh, extension headers to support different uh, in-network functions. Um, however, when we think about this uh, uh, indicators, we also need to consider the consequence of uh, such an arrangement, uh, whatever the, the, the option is. Uh, first, we need to think about uh, are the backward compatibility or to, to what extent we want to keep that. And also, uh, we want to think about the effect on the existing mechanisms, such as uh, ECMP uh, and the DPI or something else. And also, we also need to consider the performance implication. So basically, uh, we have uh, uh, three categories of uh, options we have here. The first, we call that a dedicated label. And the second one, we just uh, are try to extend some e existing mechanics such as uh, uh, GACH. And the third one, uh, we actually uh, uh, don't uh, want to introduce new um, data plane la labels. We, but instead, we just do some control plane extension. So below these three categories, we have uh, uh, five uh, options covered in this draft. So let me talk about them uh, uh, each one individually and uh, uh, about their uh, advantage and drawbacks. So the first category is uh, about uh, using the dedicated labels. 
the obvious uh, uh, solution is we just uh, apply a new extension header label label from the uh, special label uh, space. Um, the argu argument to support this is that uh, we believe the use case uh, of the extension header is sign significant enough to deserve one special label. And uh, uh, so far, we still have uh, eight unallocated uh, labels uh, from 4 to 6 and 8 to 12. So this is, seems enough. But the counter argument to this is that uh, some people might uh, think the special label space is a scarce resource. And also, we uh, and currently, we cannot exclude the possibility that we will end up needing more than one uh, special labels. Uh, for example, there might be different type of extension headers, uh, either for uh, uh, hop by hop or end to end. We might need uh, more than one special labels. So in that case, uh, we will uh, be uh, maybe um, uh, short of the uh, special special label space. Uh, so so that's uh, that's that's no good for this uh, scarce resource. But uh, uh, if we open up the possibility to re-encode some information in the uh, meaningless uh, cost and TTL field in the special purpose label, then uh, actually we can uh, put a lot of information here, there. Then uh, we possibly we will only need one special purpose label. So that's uh, uh, the, the counter, counter uh, argument uh, to that. Uh. Uh, how you? Uh, yep. uh, quick question. Are you actually yep. saying that you can use the uh, forwarding action action indicator for this? Forwarding. The, excuse me. The the, the 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 special purpose label that Kiriati was talking about. He called it forwarding action indicator. Uh, um, could you use that? Could you use that? Um, SPL for indicating uh, your, your the extension headers. Yeah, yeah. Here, as the purpose of this special label is to indicate there are extension headers uh, after the label stack. So there's only a single label there. No, there's no other, um, you know, repurpose label uh, after this. So no, what, what I, I say. I agree with Lower. Huh? I agree with Lower that it can be used because. There were three bits that uh, that they were already being used in my um, uh, special purpose label uh, that were for things that came after the label stack. And while those three labels try to be a little more prescriptive of, about what those things were, it could be simply, hey, there's something after the label stack. Uh, I'm not going into detail. So right now there's um, several bits that say here are things that are in the label stack, and then there are a few bits that say here's what comes after the label stack. Um, for example, there's an OM, there's a hop by hop OM, and there's something else. If you if you are willing to, you know, sort of just say, I don't want the details, just tell me is there something after the label stack or not, that would reduce to a single bit that says, when you're done with uh, the label stack, go look after the label stack, there's some interesting information there. So I agree with Law. Okay, <clears throat> let's, let's continue. So, so how you and Kiriati, could you close loops and actually see if you uh, agree on this? And then just report it back. Yeah, I, I think it's quite clear that you could use a bit to say, go look after the end of stack, you'll find lots of interesting stuff. That would be a, 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 because we're going to have to, whatever goes after the stack, we're going to have to make it self describing anyway. So uh, just a one bit is um, is good enough. I mean, okay. there are other the things you could do. But... Had... Sorry? And the reason that I had multiple bits is, uh, I, and I think there is a difference between the hop by hop stuff and the end uh, the, the end to end stuff, is um, if I give you that level of granularity, at least that it's hop by hop versus end to end, then the transit orders might say, yeah, I know there's something after a level stack, but I, I don't actually care. But if the hop by hop one is set, then you say, I do care, and I'm going to go look. So I think that may be the only granularity that you want. So, yeah, so that yeah, people yeah. in the middle. Yeah. 
so uh, at least I think one uh, bit is needed to indicate the type of the um, exchange header is a head, uh, either is a hop by hop or end, end to end. If uh, if there's no uh, hop by hop header present, then maybe uh, you know on the pass of the uh, on the following pass you don't need to look at that uh, after you examine the uh, special purpose label. And also, uh, yeah, if we be allow uh, you know more information to be encoded, for example, we can also encode the number of uh, uh, extension headers uh, or the length or something uh, something like that to in the in in this uh, special uh, purpose label. Now, if, if we can do that, we can uh, give I'm, more I'm, insights to the uh, to the extension headers. So. Yeah, I, I prefer. I think Stuart was saying that you know the the special purpose. I mean the the extension header should be self-describing. So I don't think we put more information. I think, like I said, the only two interesting bits of information are: is there something after the stack, and is that something that uh, you know it's yeah. hop by hop, so everyone wants to parse it. So there's only two interesting yeah. bits, and and the, yeah. the rest uh, can be self-described. Yeah. I think uh, it is open for discussion because uh, if uh, we have some unused fields here, um, maybe we can use that to uh, for the performance uh, purpose, right? If if we had some uh, sure that each exchange header is self uh, described, but uh, if we have uh, more information here, it it might help our uh, us to accelerate the uh, you know the the, the scanning or access uh, of the extension header. So, but th this is an open. So then, then you're suggesting having two different uh, special purpose labels: one for describing what comes after the stack, and one for describing what comes uh, in the stack. So the one that I talk about actually tries to do both. So it, there are not any extra bits left over. There are many bits that say, "Here's what's coming in the stack after the special purpose label," and then there's a couple of bits that says, "Oh, and by the way, there's also stuff that's after the stack." I think that can be done that way, but but um, if you want to use bits for something else, then we'd need two different special purpose labels. One that says, um, here's a combination special purpose label that tells you what's in the stack as well as something is coming after the stack, but very little information about that. And the second one that says, I'm only going to talk about what comes after the label stack, but I'll give you a lot more information. Um, so uh, those are two different approaches. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Here, here's a, we, we only uh, propose to use a one single uh, extension head, a special label as an indicator. Um, and uh, for the, uh, if, if we uh, don't want to assign, uh, you know, such a scarce resource to uh, the this indicator, then we obviously we can use a, a extension label indicator plus a, a extended uh, special uh, uh, label to support this. So now we have a plenty of uh, space available for the allocation. And uh, of, of course, the drawback here is um, we will need two labels instead of one. It's a, a little bit less in, uh, efficient. So has that two, uh, two, two label SPL mechanism already been used? Yeah, it's a, a way to extend the a special label space. You the, you use a value fifteen as an indicator to to tell you okay follow this label you will find another uh, special label. I understand that, but is there a particular um, forwarding action that is using that scheme already? I I think Maybe some of them has already been assigned. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I don't believe any have been assigned yet. That's my impression as well. Uh, there is an ask uh, assigned couple, yeah. Yes. They are requesting. The, there are a couple of requests, but no actual assignments yet. Right. So, but that means there are people or, you know, uh, oh, oh, oh. actions desperate enough to, 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 uh, to accept this. Well, well, we, so so remember that we, uh, unless it's a really, really critical function, we would resist allocating a standard single single type of SPL. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, would be would be great to 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 have the list of of those who have uh, requested to, to to use this, short of getting something better, right? 
Well, one one thing that my um, my proposal has is that there are five or six uh, existing requests for regular special right. labels that can be encompassed with a single one. Yep. I, I, we, we, oh, so you're saying that uh, the best list would probably look into your slides. Well, it would give you a list. Uh, if you look into the draft, it gives you a list of uh, the ones that have been requesting regular special labels, not extended special labels. So, um, because there's a, there's a request for OAM, there's a request for hop by hop OAM, there's a request for no further pass rate out, there's a request for um, the network slicing indicator. And uh, uh, so, we've said that. We probably just run out, out, didn't we? Right. Sorry. At which point we ran out. I think you've described a, you know, a, a use for all of the existing ones that are still spare. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Sorry, I didn't mean to disrupt with that. No, no, so, so, uh, so I mean, we wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I did go and look at the IANA uh, register, and there are actually two labels assigned. That's true. I, I yeah. already listed that in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they are in specification, they are in RCs, and uh, as far as I know, they actually deployed. So we have five RFC 8595. Yep. Okay, uh, any more questions? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay, so now we go to the second category of the options uh, to use some existing mechanics, reuse some existing uh, mechanics. Um, for example, we have this uh, L label um, with value 13 to indicate the presence of an uh, associate channel. Um, this is an earlier uh, example for uh, MPR's header extension. We can see that. And uh, so the first method, we just uh, reuse a GAL label and the plus a new uh, ACH channel type. So you can see a figure on the right side. Um, so it's a, this is a familiar and uh, existing scheme. And uh, also we don't need a new uh, special purpose label. But the issue about this is that in the RFC uh, 5586, it uh, said we can not use, we must not use this uh, for the user pack transport. It's only uh, meant to be used for control channel. And also the gale label must be the last label in the label stack. So which means uh, if you want to uh, uh, check if there are extension headers, we have to scan all the, you know, the entire label stack to find it. There might be some performance impact. And uh, also, um, although we only use one uh, label, but after the uh, label, we have this uh, ACH channel uh, header. So actually the overhead is still the same as uh, the two label scheme with uh, you know, the extend, extended special label indicator plus a special label. So the overhead is the same. And uh, uh, so if we want to try to avoid the limitation of the RFC uh, 5586, um, we could use an alternative, alternative method by using this GAL label plus a new label value to indicate uh, the, the, the uh, extension headers. So uh, the, the good thing about this is that we have no change to the established semantics of ACH. Um, but the, the issue uh, about this is uh, s uh, has a similar uh, issue um, um, as a first option, uh, except now uh, we just avoid the limitation for the uh, uh, control channel use only. Um, but uh, uh, the gale label still need to be the last one and the overhead is the same. So that's the drawbacks of this option. Any question about that? Okay. 
Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, one question, uh, just to clarify, you're saying that there is a next header uh, type in there. Are you introducing that? Next, well, where, which one you, are you mentioning? In, in the in the encoding uh, of. Uh, so what is the so you are header? saying the method one or method two in this on this page? So this is a strict change of the Gal semantics. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying whether we should or shouldn't do it. The gal is defined to say that an ACH follows and an ACH starts with 0001. Now, yes. I'm fine with us making these changes. If that's the right, if that turns out to be the right thing to do. But just, but you know, bear in mind, you will have to update 5586. And you will have to deal with people who've got live equipment that might complain. Yes. It might be the right thing to do, but we, we do need to go into it with our eyes open. Just to clarify my question, uh, in, in this encoding, uh, uh, are you proposing uh, a TLV type of thing that follows after uh, these H, E, H, and uh, type so, of length value? Which, are you talking about the method two? Uh, yeah. I see that uh, in both cases, right? In... So both, yeah. So after the Gale label, Gale is a last label in the label stack. Yeah, and yeah. after yeah. that, you sh you are expecting a header, ACH header. Right. Then uh, yeah. based on the uh, standard uh, RFC, uh, the first, uh, for, if it's a standard ACH channel uh, header, the first uh, label will be uh, 0001. Then okay. you have this uh, format. Then here I, uh, you know, first method I just propose to uh, use a new channel tab. It's a uh, the, the the second uh, two bytes of the first word. You, uh, I use a red circle here to indicate. Okay, follow this. You will see the uh, extension. So why do you? Can you clarify? Why do you need to to do that? Why can't you just do it with an existing ACH? Existing ACH, I think uh, they have uh, their purpose defined, right? It's not useful indicator. Uh, you can have, you can have, as many, there are 65,000 ACHs you can define. Uh, yeah, so, so this first one is uh, exactly that. I, I just said, uh, okay. because the second half of the word is a ACH channel type, you just need to get a new type. Um, I am still uh, doubtful if, if you're doing OAM, uh, an existing GASH uh, already carried, and I want to carry this as well. So then how does it work? It doesn't work because, uh, you, you know, oh, okay. uh, this is this why is, I'm asking for the next yeah. header then. Okay. This is just to be try to reuse uh, um, the, the mechanics, but, uh, you know, if multiple, the existing SH want to compete with this location, then you have no way to handle it. How can you? Oh, I think I um, you, you can't. You can't have multiple ACH headers if you, if you uh, turn that two bytes uh, 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 channel type into a next header followed by this header, then you, you can you can easily do that. Yeah, but I was asking about that, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Okay. So, yeah. Any, any question? Okay. So then, then let's go to the uh, the third option is uh, for the control plane extension. Uh, we can use a configured uh, FEC label um, to indicate the presence of uh, extension headers after the label stack. So the this is an FEC label has the uh, same forwarding semantics. But it has uh, some actual uh, functions uh, associated with it. Uh, if we use the FEC labels as an indicator, then the good thing about that is that there, there will be no need for any um, e uh, indicator standard. And also, um, there's no label stack overhead at all. But uh, the counter argument of this is that. Uh, we will need to move the, all the complexity to the control plane. And also, uh, since we need uh, to, 
uh, uh, to assign the FBC labels, we will reduce uh, available label space. And also, uh, the, the, the FBC uh, assignment is uh, local to the uh, to each domain, and then it's very difficult for cross domain interoper uh, interoperability, uh, and also the incremental deployment uh, that will be make make more difficult. I have two questions here. Yeah. Uh, when you say reduce the available label space, you're just reducing it by one, right? Um, it still depends uh, because you need a, for every um, boarding label, you will need to assign a FEC label um, to tell you, okay, um, for this label, uh, there will be uh, extension headers after the label stack you need to look at. So, which means basically you reduce the label state space to half. Oh, so so this is like for the for the uh, hard by hard behavior. Yeah. Yes. Because for 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 uh, uh, otherwise you only need one label to after your label uh, at the back bottom of your label stack to indicate that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you. So. Uh, after we summarize this uh, five options uh, available today, and uh, the preferred option uh, is uh, just uh, for a new special purpose label as an indicator. And as I uh, just mentioned, we can reuse the cost TTL fields as new code points for other information. For example, the type and the number of extension headers, uh, HBH or end to end. And uh, also, uh, we might want to um, make it flexible or where this special purpose label can appear in the label stack. Um, however, uh, if the uh, backward compatibility is a, is, a, uh, is a must, then it probably still need to be at the bottom of stack. But um, the question is, uh, must this uh, still be a hard requirement? or we can make it flexible. So if we can allow this uh, uh, label, special label to be in any location in the label stack, then uh, we can um, make the, uh, you know, we don't, we don't need to always um, scan the entire label stack, uh, stack then make the performance uh, better. Um, so these are two uh, discussion points. And also, there might be some other options not covered in this document uh, we should include. And finally, uh, the purpose of uh, uh, this document is to list all the available options and uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, reach a consensus on uh, which option to choose use as a extension header indicator. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, any questions? Just one comment that, uh, given that uh, uh, there's, there's so much discussion on this topic recently, I I, I do think that uh, as a new special uh, purpose label, even a single one, seems to be a, a, a warranted here. Just just my point, uh, a comment here. I agree. Um, I have a um, an ask. Uh, I think Loa had also pointed that out. Uh, um, can you um, discuss the possibility of embedding this uh, indicator inside a generic uh, uh, action indicator? Um, do, do we need a, 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 an explicit special purpose label just for the extended header, or we can rely on a generic uh, indicator? Generic, uh, what do you mean a generic uh, indicator? Ah, okay, I, I mean, uh, uh, Kiriti had presented a, an, a generic uh, uh, forwarding action indicator and, and you can embed multiple actions in it. And uh, this could be just one flag inside that <laughs> action. And uh, the ask is to uh, sync up. There. Sorry. 
Go ahead. I'm saying it's already there that they're not, a little more specific, but there's a, a place for a hop by hop and end to end OAM, which comes after the label start. That can be generalized. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so basically, what I think Tarek says that we want to uh, look at the case where we can. Uh, include the forwarding action indicator and the uh, extension header indicator into something generic. And um, if that's possible, it's actually just one uh, special purpose label. And that strengthens the case for uh, allocating a special purpose label, both for uh, curated scheme and for this. Uh, so in a way, um, I believe I believe that the scheme that I have is pretty general. The only thing that I would say is that for the stuff that's after the stack, I was going off of uh, Gandhi's. I think it was Gandhi's OM uh, draft, which says I want um, a hop by hop indicator and a um, end to end indicator for OM. That can be, that can be generalized, and if we do generalize, I think then we have what you want. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. What I asked you before is actually to work with uh, Song to uh, actually come back with a, a statement on uh, how it could be done and if it's possible. Um, I think uh, certainly it's possible if you just, uh, if you can use a single bit to, uh, you to tell you the different meaning of this label. But uh, my uh, concern is that uh, do we really need to, um, you know, I, I think maybe one of them is enough to support all the use cases. Why we need to support the two mechanism? Mm. Well, uh, to clarify, when I said earlier, the, uh, my my my, I, I think it is what warrants a, a special purpose label. I I did mean that uh, it's a part a part of uh, uh, a creative's uh, proposal. Um, so I think uh, whether whether we need two bits there or not, that's a separate question. I I see a value for having two bits because um, I, you know. People in the middle might not care about something that is end to end, but having said that, I think there's another key which needs to be written down that if you make the assumption that um, whatever comes after the label stack is self describing, um, I think, and I think there's there's no reason why it shouldn't be. That makes things much much simpler. So when you talk about what comes after the label stack. You only have to say, is it there or not, or is it end to end or hub by hub, and that makes uh, what you carry in the label stack much much simpler. So if there is something there, you go to the end and then you start parsing it, and mm -hmm. and then uh, you don't have to put a lot of information in the label stack about you know um, yeah. how many there are or how how long it is or anything. If it's self describing, that takes. We, we need to think about the case. There's actually multiple extension headers, and uh, some of them are uh, hop by hop, and some of them are uh, end to end. So, if this is a case, then you better know more information about uh, even how many uh, of the uh, headers of each type. Uh, that will help you uh, to make a decision whether or not you, you want to skip the further scanning. Or uh, you don't need to look look at that at all. So it, I think it really depends on the structure of the extension header chains. So I understand what you're saying. Ultimately, if you want to get a lot more fancy about how much information you put there, so that people can make more uh, intelligent decisions on whether they're going to look through the label stack or not then we probably end up needing two separate uh, special purpose labels. But if you say that the, uh, the extension header is self-describing and that most of the time you do want to go and look at it if it's uh, um, hop by hop, 
than than the scheme that uh, I have uh, would work. So maybe we end up with, uh, to Laura's point, maybe we end up with two schemes. One that is um, very minimalistic in terms of what it says about what comes after the label stack, but also says about what's in the label stack. And a second one that is much, much more fancy for what comes after the label stack, but that's all it does. So what I'm going to do is start writing down some of these things, um, hopefully in the, in the wiki that um, uh, Tarek is going to put up there for us. And, and then I think that will help clarify the, the discussion right now. It's a little bit abstract, but I think we can get further. Okay, that's good. That's great. Uh, we also, uh, um, at the top of the time allotted, um, um so unless uh, there is a uh, last um, uh, last words before we adjourn uh song are you done yes i'm done thank you okay thanks all right i did take on a couple of action items and uh, the minutes are uh, um, work in progress but uh, i'm updating in real time if anybody took minutes please shoot them at me and i will add them to the uh, uh to the wiki or feel free to add them yourself if you if you want. I'll stop the recording right now. Uh.